This video is brought to you by Baber and Bioinformatics, providers of bioinformatics training, consultancy and software. In this video, we're going to take a look at Redotable, a desktop application for creating dot plots, which are a graphical way of visualising the similarity between a pair of sequences. Dot plots are a really useful way to be able to look at what can be quite a complex issue, which is the sequence similarity between a pair of sequences. In this simple example, we have two short sequences and we want to be able to compare them. In this case, there are two blocks of similarity between the sequences. At the start, there's a nice linear match uh, that matches exactly between the two sequences. And then after a small insertion, there is an offset match later on. In this case, a simple pairwise alignment with these sort of similarity blocks is fine for visualising this, but as the sequences get larger and the relationships between them get more complex, then this kind of sequence level view is insufficient to be able to get at the complexity of the similarities between sequences. Dot plots are a way to be able to summarise these kinds of comparisons in a nice graphical way. In a dot plot, you take the two sequences and place them perpendicular to each other. For each block of similarity, for example, this is the first block that we saw, you simply draw a line along the plot, starting at the beginning of the alignment block and ending at the end of the alignment block in both sequences. So in this case, we would end up with a diagonal line that ran across the plot like this. We then have the second alignment block, which falls a little further along. And again, we draw the line for that. And by adding lines for all of the different blocks of similarity between the two sequences, we build up a more complex version of the plot, which summarizes all of the complexity in the sequence similarity. Dot plots are therefore flexible enough to express all of the different types of similarity that you can have between a pair of sequences, whether the matches are simple linear forward or indeed reverse complement matches, insertions on either the X or the Y sequence, duplications, inversions, segmental duplications, or even highly repetitive regions that turn up all over the place in both sequences. What we're going to show you in the remainder of this video then is the use of the redotable application uh, to create and display and manipulate these dot plots. The program is available from the Baber and Bioinformatics project site and the source code is available from this GitHub repository. Here I have opened the files that I'm going to use for this demonstration. At the top here I have the distribution of the redotable application itself. So this is simply the unzipped contents of the zip file you can download from the Baber and Bioinformatics website. Uh, and it includes the redotable executable file as we're on the Windows platform here. Redotable will work on Windows, Mac or Linux. Underneath we have the data that we're going to align. So in this case, what we're doing is we are comparing a de novo assembly of a bacterial genome, which is this assembly.fasta, uh, which is a FASTA file with uh, a lot of assembly contigs in it. And we're comparing that to a reference file, which is a downloaded genomic reference from NCBI, uh, which has two sequences in it, uh, a large genome sequence and a slightly smaller plasmid sequence. And the question we're trying to answer is how much of the reference we've actually managed to capture in our assembly. We're going to launch the redotable application. Just double clicking on here. And that will open up the main window. Once we've got the program open, we're going to need to load the sequences into it. We can do that from the file menu where we're going to open the X and the Y sequences. Uh, for practical reasons, it makes life slightly easier if we put the most complete sequence, so in our case, the reference on the X axis and the more fragmented sequence on the Y axis, but you can do it either way around. So if I go and find my reference sequence and load that in, you'll see that I have a sequence here of, a fa of about five megabases. I can open the Y sequences and this is my assembly. And again, about five megabases. Next, we can start the alignment between the two. Uh, before we do that, I'm just going to just check on a preference. So Redotable is based around a word-based alignment, which means that you need an exact match between the two sequences of a specified length. Under the view and preferences, 
menu, you can specify what that length is. Now, because these sequences are quite big, they're about 5 million bases each, and because we would expect that they should be identical, we can use quite a large word size. The default is 50, and that's fine. If we were doing something with sequences that might be more divergent, we want, might want to make that value smaller. To start the alignment, I then just go into File and say Start Aligning. It will then index the reference sequence and then search it against each of the scaffolds in my assembly. This will take a few seconds to complete and then it should display the dot plot for me. So here we have the dot plot. The grey lines across the plot on both the X and the Y axes indicate the positions of the different subsequences uh, within my main FASTA format sequence files. And then the red and the blue lines indicate the positions of the matches. Anything that's in red was a forward strand match between the original orientation of the sequences and anything that's in blue is a reverse strand match. You can see that for each of the assembly contigs in my assembly.fasta file, there's generally quite a good match to somewhere in the original reference, but these are not ordered in the way that we might want. You can also see that in addition to the main uh, stretches of match there are also a lot of smaller regions of match and that's because even at 50 base pairs uh, we can get false positive matches between the two sequences. On the right hand side of the application there's a little slider and you can drag that up and down to interactively change the minimum size of match that you want to look at and that will allow you to clean up the plot uh, to look only at the ma more major matches. To try and get a more coherent view of this uh, similarity, we're going to want to be able to reorder and reverse complement some of the sequence segments. We can do that under View and Sequence Properties, which shows us a bunch of properties that we can change for either our X sequences, so the reference, or in this case, mostly the Y sequences, our assembly. If we look on here, the very first scaffold that we have, scaffold 1 um, at the bottom, uh, is in the wrong orientation relative to our reference. So on scaffold 1 here I can just say reverse complement and it will turn it around so it's in the correct orientation. I can also see that relative to scaffold 2 they're in the wrong positioning relative to each other. Uh, so if I move scaffold 1 to be above scaffold 2 then I'll be closer to getting a linear match to the reference. So on here I can say raise scaffold 1 and now it'll come a bit closer and I could iteratively go through this process. So up here, scaffold four, I could say, well, scaffold four. Yeah, I want to turn that round and I want to lower it down so I can start to build up a more linear match. Now, we can do this um, manually and go through the entire assembly, but that's going to get quite tedious because there's a lot of these to deal with. So to make life easier, the program has an automated assembly uh, tool where I can just go to view and auto arrange sequences. In this case I want to leave the X sequences as they are but I want to rearrange the Y sequences to try and match the X sequence as best they can. So if I run that it will now automatically reposition all of my scaffolds to try and see if I can get the best possible match against my reference. And by doing this I can immediately see that actually I have a very complete assembly of my reference. Uh, if I just clean this up a little bit. Uh, I can also see at the end here I have this plasmid sequence and I can see now that I can start to see that there is some uh, degree of match between that but it's not very easy to see because it's a small proportion of the overall genome. So what I can do is I can zoom in. So to zoom in uh, inside Redotable you simply click and drag a box. You'll see a little region highlighting green and when you let go that region will expand to fill the screen. When you're zoomed in, uh, you will get little purple borders to show you that you're not looking at the edge of the sequence. And then you can either zoom in further or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to scroll up and down in the assembly. Or we hold, by holding the shift key, you can scroll left and right. Uh, in this case, I want to zoom right in on the plasmid part of the uh, assembly. I can see in this case that the auto assembly has got one of the contigs wrong. So in this case, scaffold 28 is in the wrong orientation. So if I go back to my sequence properties, I can simply sort my scaffolds by name again. At the moment, they're sorted by position. But if I find scaffold 28, I can then just reverse its orientation. And now 
that should be correct. If I wanted to illustrate something uh, in an assembly, I can also from this same view highlight uh, sequences. So if I highlight sequence 28, I'll see that comes up. And if I highlight the corresponding plasmid sequence on the x-axis, I'll see that the place where they intersect also goes a different colour. So that can be quite a nice way to be able to illustrate stuff in here. I can also choose to selectively remove sequences from the project. So up here I've got a couple of sequences that uh, don't actually match anywhere. So if I want to get rid of scaffold 35, I can simply find scaffold 35 and say just hide this. And now that's gone and I can do the same for the other ones that are there until I've cleaned up the assembly. If I want to zoom out from here, I just press the right mouse button and I can go back to looking at the entire assembly again. Uh, to clean up slightly more, I might want to get rid of these grey lines that indicate the positions of the individual contigs just to get a cleaner view of the overall uh, similarity between the two assemblies. That's uh, in the preferences and under preferences, I can say, well, don't show me the sequence edges for the Y sequences. And when I save that, I'll see the cleaned up version of this. Once I'm finished on here and I've assessed the uh, similarity between the sequences, I have a couple of options to save things out of here. So I can save the actual dot plot. Uh, this is saves a view of the graphic itself. And I can save that in two different file formats. I can save it as a PNG image. Uh, which is just like a screenshot, but would save that for me. Or I can save it as uh, an SVG file. Uh, this is a vector graphics file, so it would be in an editable format so that it would be suitable for going into a publication uh, and would allow me to uh, change this to my own preference. And that will also then save similarly, but in a format that I can now edit. The other thing that I might want to do from here is to export out the assembled uh, contigs from my Y sequences. So these are rearranged and reverse complemented so that they match the ordering of the uh, X axis sequences. So also under the file menu, I can say save sequences. So if I do that, Then I get a few options for what I want to save. So firstly, I can choose which set of sequences to save, either the X or the Y sequences. So in this case, I would save the Y sequences. Uh, I can choose to keep them as separate sequences, but just in the correct order, or I can merge them together into a single sequence, which would then have the different contigs separated by a group of ends, and you can specify how many ends to put between uh, different uh, contigs. I can also choose whether I want to put the bases in. If not, it'll just write the fast day headers, so it'll tell me which contigs go in which order, uh, but without the actual data behind them. I can add the description from the original fast day files, and I can annotate onto the uh, header line the length of each contig and the strand that was uh, assessed when we did the assembly. And that will then finally give me my resorted assembly in here in the same fast day format that we imported in. So hopefully this sort of tool is useful for anybody who needs to be able to compare pairs of large sequences. We've found it particularly useful for assessing genome assemblies for sort of my, uh, microbial genomes, but there are plenty of other applications where this might be useful, um, and hopefully you'll find it useful too.